So what is LinkedIn and why should you care? So LinkedIn is basically a social networking site and it looks and feels like some of the other social networks that you probably use. In this case, the objective is very different. This is your professional social network. It's your professional digital presence. So why should you care? Well, you should care for a number of reasons. Um, so what LinkedIn can do for you is that one, by creating your own profile, in, in a good way, of course, and we'll talk about that in a minute, then you're automatically more visible than you currently are. That's a good thing. As long as your profile is positive and full of good content and that you use it, you, you use it in the right way. So that's, that's step one. Two, um, LinkedIn allows you to connect with other people. So your network is your most important tool uh, in your job search. And so um, LinkedIn is a very accessible network that you can tap into. So you can connect with people that you know, connect with people that you don't know that are recruiters within, within your industry. So that that's, that's a great opportunity. Three, it allows you to follow employers and organizations. And this is sometimes something that people miss when they're using LinkedIn, but it's really, really key. So if you think about the social networks that you use, the fact that the reason you use it uh, so often is that the people that you connect with, the pages you follow, share interesting stuff. So it's the same with LinkedIn. If you follow companies and organizations and join groups and connect with people that are relevant, then the content in your feed will be more relevant and more interesting and more beneficial for you. So when you're starting your LinkedIn profile, you should find and, and follow as many companies as possible that are obviously that are obviously relevant. LinkedIn also allows you to search for jobs um, and it even suggests jobs to you. So LinkedIn is, is global. Um, like, like most of the social networks, you can easily tap into opportunities and, and find companies and connect with people that are right across the world. So if you do have intentions to work globally, then it's a network that you can tap into very quickly. So I think overall, there's some of those specific benefits, but overall, one of the most important parts of your career success is about you being curious, using your time productively, taking control of what you can, making yourself visible and getting yourself out there. And LinkedIn is your opportunity to do that. And it's one that you know you have control of and it's really important that you take advantage of these elements that you have control of during this difficult time. So what makes a great LinkedIn profile? Okay, so maybe you're a student who has used LinkedIn before, maybe a little bit. Uh, maybe you've created a profile, haven't done much with it. Maybe you've never been on it. Maybe you're an active user. So the question is, when you're getting started or you want to improve um, your use of LinkedIn, what are the fundamentals of a great LinkedIn profile? So we're going to have a look at an example profile. So the first couple of really important points are your profile picture and your headline. OK, so again, so similar to other social networks but the emphasis is different with LinkedIn. So your your uh, your photo needs to be professional. Now that doesn't mean it needs to be professionally taken. It means it needs to portray a professional image of you. Okay, so it needs to be a good quality photo, just of you. Not you and your partner, you and your family, you and your friends, just you. And really it probably a head and shoulders type shot is gonna work best. Um, it's, it's up to you at the end of the day, you have to make your own judgment, but it has to portray a professional image of you. Your headline is, so you've got your profile picture, obviously your name, and then the subtitle below your name, that's what we call your headline. And that's really important because whenever um, LinkedIn suggests you as a connection to other people, um, then all all, you, all they will see is those three things, your picture, your name, and your headline. So the headline is the thing that will tell them instantly how relevant you are in terms of connecting with. So most people um, put in their job title, but for you, that's unlikely to be the most relevant thing and unlike, unlikely to be the thing that you really want um, a pr prospective connection to see. So you might put, rather than put, you know, say if you're working part-time at the minute in, in retail or something like that, or, you know, rather than put in part-time retail assistant, but you're also a final year uh, business study student, then if you put in uh, aspiring um, 
marketing professional or even business studies graduate class of 2020, that will say much more to a prospective connection than your part-time job title. So it all depends on what stage of your career you're at, but your headline is really important. So as we move down through your profile, kind of the rules that apply to you, a good CV, kind of apply to a good LinkedIn profile as well. So starting off with your, uh, your about you, your kind of initial summary. So this is a relatively short and direct paragraph, sort of opening to your profile. So again, you need to think uh, carefully about what it is if a prospective employer, for example, or a possible connection or an existing connection uh, went into your profile to find out a bit more about you. What is it that you would want them to read? What are the first few things that before they scroll down into your education, into your work experience, into your skills, what is it that you would want them to read? So what is your career objective? What are the highlights of maybe your work experience? key elements that you're interested in career-wise and, and maybe particular skills that you want to highlight. The difference with LinkedIn, and this goes throughout your profile in comparison to a CV, is that um, it's more dynamic. So you have the opportunity to create and add different types of content, whereas a standard CV is just that, it's standard. In your LinkedIn profile, whether it's in your summary, whether it's in your education, whether it's in your work experience, you can attach different types of files, documents, images, videos. And I really encourage you to take advantage of that where it's appropriate. Even if it's a picture of you winning an award or you getting your certificate for being on the Dean's List or for your dissertation or for getting an award for you know, your, your part-time job, any of those things really add a really strong impact to your CV. So, but that opening summary is, is really important and you need to think about it almost as an opening, almost like a cover letter. What is it that you would want um, a prospective employer, for example, to read? So take your time, write a paragraph of, you know, 10 or 12 lines, make it positive, well-written, good language with good intent, and it really gets across some of your highlights before the, re the reader or the reviewer of your profile scrolls down to the rest of the more specific detail. Moving down then into education, again, um, pretty similar to your CV. Some of the errors I would see with uh, education within a LinkedIn profile is just a lack of detail. So, and we see that with CVs all the time. So you need to specify the degree you're studying, the dates, so you're finishing this summer. Um, and also, um, if you've performed really well, you'll, you want to highlight that. You want to tell the prospective employer or your prospective connection what it is you've actually studied. So for you, you know what biomedical sciences, it, you, know, you know what modules you've studied. You know if you studied sport, you know if you studied fine art, what, you know, what is within that. But as a prospective employer or prospective connection, do I know that? No. So don't assume that I know. And if you feel it's relevant, tell me more about what you've studied and also some of the skills that you've developed, the awards you've got, the particular things that you've achieved. It's really, really important. The tendency is just to put in bog standard basic information, but if you put a bit more time and thought into what would be good for the reviewer to see and read about you, then you'll really benefit from that. Moving on to work experience, again, really similar to your CV, pretty much the same in that it, 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 with work experience, you want to put in the right information, your job title, your dates of employment, your responsibilities, but also the skills that you've developed and demonstrated through that, the achievements, the performance, so the, the information and the specific information that will help um, the reviewer sit up and take notice of what it is you've got, what it is you've done in the past, because remember, past performance is a great indicator of future performance. So you'll start with the most recent and work back. And of course, if you've done a placement or an internship or you've got relevant work experience, you'll really want to give a, quite a lot of detail on that. Then as you go down through the LinkedIn profile, you go into um, license, licenses and certifications that may be relevant to you, it may not. So if you've done any additional certifications that are, that are relevant to your industry, put them there. Um, for example, if you study sport and you've got coaching badges, you, you'll want to put them in that section. And there's other 
examples that will apply to different uh, subject areas. Then as you flow down, you'll move into the skills section. So LinkedIn gives you the opportunity to select the skills that you feel you have. And it's important that you do that. I mean, you're, you're basically just selecting these skills. That's important, I suppose, because for, for a few reasons. One, um, it's good for you to tell anybody that's reviewing your profile what skills you feel you have. Two, it allows other people you're connected with to endorse you for that skill. So if you say you're a good communicator, then somebody who's connected with you can actually sort of back you up on that and endorse that skill within your profile. That's a good thing. And thirdly, um, that data helps LinkedIn identify jobs that are relevant to your skill set and that will that will be good for you also. So those are the main kind of fundamentals of your actual profile. So it's similar to your CV, um, but it allows for more dynamic content. Um, and there's different things that you can do to really make that as positive as possible.